Bun soir à tous. J'ai un privilège et un plaisir de vous parler ce soir. Et je veux dire merci à votre bonne jazzy pour m'inviter. Good evening, everybody. It's a privilege and a pleasure to talk to you this evening, and I want to say thanks to Reform Jersey for inviting me. So what do I have to say about the way forwards for Jersey? Well, I want to talk about four things. I want to talk to you tonight about culture. I would also like to talk about community. I'd like to talk a bit about communication. And I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. I thought that might change the uh, temperature in the room a little bit, but... So first, culture. It's easy and natural to get angry about the medium-term financial plan, with its harsh cuts and disproportionate taxes, to fear its consequences even, and feel the pain of those most affected. And it's tempting in these circumstances to disappear down ideological tram lines and respond to such injustice by starting to imagine class war, occupying a building or organizing a riot squad like we had back in 1769 in Royal Square. But to respond wisely, I believe we first need to think deeply and understand important elements, not only of our delicate cultural context here in Jersey, but of the nature of culture itself. Because this financial plan has emerged in a cultural context, both locally and globally. These days, anthropologists and sociologists wouldn't see Jersey culture as something set in stone, but as a constantly evolving set of shared meanings that are unbounded, contested, negotiated and constructed through human action. This cultural evolution is fought out in the everyday life where relations of power are exercised. And the choices we make each day and the ways that we interact with those social forces shape that culture and consequently work the world around us. In other words, as the saying goes, the personal is political. This is true in a positive, active sense, but it's also true in a negative, passive sense. If we sit on our hands and say it's pointless to do anything, then we really will get what's coming to us. So I believe we would do well to make it our personal responsibility to challenge the culture of political apathy and cynicism we have here in Jersey. I know it's hard, with all the struggles of life, at the end of a long day at work, dealing with the kids and wrestling with bills, to find the energy and imagination to believe in a better world, let alone do anything about it. But we must. I think it would also be very healthy to challenge the culture of unquestioning deference to authority, which is so typical in Jersey. When it comes to any form of authority, it absolutely must be able to justify itself for the good of the whole community. And if it can't, we should respectfully question it, dismantle it, and replace it with something better. As I've been talking to family and friends about what to say today, one word has kept coming up. Disconnect. There is a huge disconnect between the everyday folk and our government. People say they feel like many states members, not just the Council of Ministers even, act like our rulers and not our representatives. Representatives speak for the people and act in their interest. Rulers generally do what's easiest for them and perhaps keep people passive by giving them bread and circuses. Or should that be a few TV licenses? When I'm teaching music, I often play my students recordings of unfamiliar music from around the world. They can physically listen to the sounds, but often they don't know how to really hear it. They can learn a few facts about it, but it takes time to really get acquainted with it. This is the difference between learning by acquisition and learning by acquaintance. It's worth asking, not just how many ministers have ever lived on the minimum wage for more than five minutes, but how many have had to choose between buying a bit of fresh veg for their kids' tea and putting the heating on. How many of them have walked into the kitchen one morning as a child to find their mum staring at a letter in tears because she literally had been praying she'd find a way of getting through the month and she's just found out she's got a few extra quid in benefits? At times like that, our social safety net can seem like a real godsend. So, our ministers can say they are listening, but can they really hear us? There is much to celebrate about our cultural traditions in Jersey. And culture can be a unifying force, which is partly why I'm an advocate of Jeria, our language that we can all learn and appreciate, no matter what our background is, helping create a kind of a kinship across our culture, across divides, and forming a common cultural heritage. Which brings me on to community. 
Every Liberation Day, we're reminded of those elements of our cultural character that have seen us through some tough times. Perseverance, integrity, independence, imagination, resourcefulness, resilience, and community spirit. We're nothing without community. And in, in facing the future and responding to the harsh reali realities that we're now confronted with, we absolutely have to work together as one, with one goal of working toward the overall benefit and well-being of the whole community, not just the corporations and the lucky few. It's up to us to build a proactive, democratic community in Jersey that can present a cultural, political and economic alternative to the monochromatic mindset that got us in this mess. We need to reach out and be inclusive, as inclusive as possible, diverse, feminist and intersectional. This also means not alienating people that could become our allies. Ultimately, it's systems and systems of thinking that we're fighting, not people. I was reminded of this last night, actually. Uh, Badlebeck had a gig at Lamar Vineyards uh, for the Assemblée Parlementaire de la Fran Francophonie. And I ended up having a chat with one Senator Philip Ozef. <laughs> Obviously, we aren't going to agree on everything. He didn't even accept my use of the word cuts. What cuts, he said. But we did end up agreeing on the principle, the moral principle of taxation. Interesting. And this is absolutely the debate we need to be having up and down the island. Beyond the practical arguments around progressive taxation, what are the moral obligations? And what are the implications for our community? Who do we want to be? And who do we want to form part of who we are? If our common goal is the well-being of community, is it time to question the cultural narratives that sees our tax structure as sacrosanct and instead present, to use J.K. Rowling's words, a notion of patriotism that asks those with the most to also help our community the most? And that brings me to communication, which is again part of culture. The types of language we use when talking about all these issues is crucial. Many folks are turned off by words like austerity, and barely have time to consider these things whilst frantically treading life's hamster wheel. But we need to find ways to communicate and connect with our friends and family, colleagues and acquaintances that can translate into engagement and simple, positive, organised, collective action. It's easy to understand why voter turnout is so appallingly low in Jersey, but this just perpetuates the status quo. We have to change this. And if you follow Harold Laswell's definition of politics, which is that politics is who gets what, when and how, then it is in the coming months and years as austerity begins to hit people in the pockets that we need to be joining up the dots and putting that in a political perspective. Whether that's over the dinner table at home or over a pint of liberation down the pub listening to a local band. Which reminds me, last, night gig, last night's gig was um, quite surreal at times with all these well-oiled politicians in a room dancing to Jerry folk songs. I had to smile when at one point we had the Chief Minister sitting over there, Deputy Tadia playing accordion over here and the bailiff bopping in the middle. It was awesome. And it reminded me how small our island is. How actually this is a, a tight-knit community and it isn't ultimately people that we have to fight, that we are fighting. It's systems. It's systems of thinking. And these, some of these folk have become trapped in certain systems of thinking that need to be challenged. And speaking of our beloved bailiff, Brings me on nicely to our Lord Jesus. I've been thinking about Jesus and politics ever since our aforementioned bailiff got trigger happy with Deputy Tadier last week. From a cultural perspective, in many ways, Jersey is still a very Christian place, and many of us, like myself, would still consider themselves to have some kind of faith in, or at least be inspired by Jesus. So let's look at his life for a second. Born in relative poverty and somewhat tricky circumstances, relying on the help of others. Then soon afterwards becoming a refugee. Then growing up in a working class household as a skilled labourer, before rejecting material security and embracing an itinerant life of service, preaching love, grace and community. Speaking truth to the greedy and powerful, prioritising the poor and needy, throwing the money lenders out of the temple, hanging out with and caring for all kinds of social rejects and undesirables, and finally, literally giving his life for others. The question is, 
Not just would he be inside the Tory conference having dinner with the directors, or outside with the poor and disabled protesting unjust government, but if we choose to see this life as an example that people of all faiths and none can learn from and be challenged by, what does this mean for our personal and therefore political choices in everyday life here in Jersey? To be fair to the Chief Minister, I actually wrote to him about all this kind of stuff a while back and he's invited me for coffee. So uh, let me know if you've got anything you want me to ask him. Or better yet, write to him yourself. So to summarise, we're now faced with huge challenges in Jersey. These challenges deeply intertwine economics, politics and culture, and the battle will be won or lost in the everyday front line. And we haven't even begun to grasp the nettle that is our ever-growing population, food security, our many ecological challenges, and how this all fits into a global context. There are no easy answers, but if we don't work together to find the solutions, then our prospects are not good at all. So, let's engage. Develop a resilient community, really listen to each other, learn and grow, and build a positive momentum for the future. Let's not be afraid to talk and debate with family and friends. Join the union and get stuck in. Join Jersey in transition and help Jersey get greener. And join Reform Jersey in building an alternative, optimistic vision for our future. Because ultimately, if this government aren't serving us as a whole community, they need to know about it at the ballot box. Merci, Ben Lefebvre, for my Thanks very much for listening.